Welcome back, Perry once more here to talk to you about your future. What are you gonna do in say five, six, 10 years after you've established your six figure career plan, but you wanna grow more? Obviously you're gonna grow in your career, you're gonna to continue to become more uh, proficient and your expertise is gonna grow significantly, but you might hit a point where you kind of top out with your earnings or you're looking for a change or something different. For those folks, they often go into management. And information technology management is a great way to go. It's a great way to grow. And it's also very lucrative if you get in and do the right things and grow your career appropriately. So I wanna just give you a quick overview of information technology management, sort of the traits that are required, the responsibilities of information technology management. So as you're doing your initial career planning, you can kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Like, okay, I'm doing this now, but in five years, I really wanna start moving into management. And I just wanna kind of give you some of the fundamentals. At the same time, once we go over information technology management, you may decide, eh, I don't know, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm not into it. because it is a lot of work because when you're a manager, it's no longer just about you. You live for your team and you live and die by the success of your team. And also it's all about what the company wants. It's just not you being the lone cowboy developer anymore. You're responsible for a lot of different folks and often you know, you're responsible for the success of whatever projects that you're managing. So not for everyone, but it is for a lot of individuals looking to grow. I actually got into management pretty early in my career. Um, I was a systems administrator for a long time, but then made the transition to management and was super happy I did it. And it gave me a lot of exposure to a lot of different projects and a lot of different teams. And I was able to grow really quickly. And that's the great thing about information technology. There's no other field that I know of anyways, that an individual who has a little ambition, a little gumption to them can grow and climb the ladder as quickly as you can in information technology. Folks in marketing, they do not climb the ladder as fast as we do. Folks in finance do not climb the ladder as fast as we do. There are just so many opportunities and as such so much need for accomplished and skilled managers that it's very easy to grow. I mean, I went within three years, I went from working a help desk to being an IT manager to being an IT director. And then like three years later, I was a VP. So. Now, mind you, I was busting my butt and doing all kinds of different things to make that happen, but at least I had that opportunity and possibility because I had chosen information technology as my career path. And I wanna just give you some overview of that now so you're aware of it as you're doing your career planning. So every IT group in an organization, they gotta have a manager, and that manager is responsible for the success of that team. Sounds pretty obvious, but you know we all have bosses, in IT though, the manager is absolutely critical because they're sort of shaping the direction of those specific activities related to any number of things like health of a system, um, upgrades, uh, performance, all those things hinge on the IT manager. And the reality is the IT manager is the first person to get into trouble if things aren't working properly. So be aware of that, you're out there. You can't really pass the buck when you're an IT manager, the buck stops with you. And you know, those successful technology managers have a solid foundation in the technology their team support. They've also got to have a lot of what we call soft skills. They've got to be good negotiators. They have to be good with people. They have to be good at dealing, you know, with some of the things that a lot of technologists don't like to deal with. Personality conflicts, that sort of thing. You've got to be able to navigate that. And unfortunately, you got to be able to deal with politics. Politics is really hard for a lot of tech guys. Tech guys are very like eight, black and white, one and one equals two. They don't really understand politics. And if you're gonna step into this role, you gotta, I, I hate it. Politics is one of my least favorite things in the world, but you're gonna deal with it. And you have to be prepared that that is something you're gonna have to deal with on a regular basis. So you gotta have those people skills, the soft skills. You've got to put the team first and you gotta be willing to put up with some politics. If that doesn't sound like it's for you, then probably IT management would not be a good career choice. Now, it is very difficult for companies to find qualified and talented IT managers. And the reason is, IT managers tend to manage very specific 
highly technical environments and teams. For example, retail, merchandising systems, very specific. You need a manager to run the devs, the DBAs, and all the folks responsible for those systems. It's often hard to find folks who have that specific skill set. So as you're thinking about your career path, find out what you like best. Maybe you're a developer and you're working on different projects, but you're like, oh, I really want to be a manager. Start thinking about maybe getting more niche around healthcare or manufacturing or retail so that you know you can figure out where you want to be an IT manager in the future. Because though you can be a bit of a generalist if you really want to, it really helps to have a specific set of experience based on what you're going to be managing in the future and what vertical you're going to be working on. And the man, though they manage teams, uh, you also got to deal with a lot of vendor stuff. So not just are you managing your team and all the different systems, you've got to be able to deal with outside forces. Because the second you become an IT manager, immediately you're going to start getting calls from uh, you know, server vendors, software vendors, staffing companies. And you probably will use a lot of these folks to get your job done, to accomplish the goals that you have for your team that's been outlined by your leadership. So you got to deal with that. So that means contract negotiation. It means budgeting. Um, it means dealing with finance to make sure the invoices get paid. All that stuff that you would never deal with as a developer, as a PM, you've got to deal with that as a manager. So just prepare yourself. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm poo-pooing IT management. What I'm really trying to do is I found that folks who are really technical, like devs or SEs, network folks, they're not always comfortable with this, with that sort of responsibility. And so I like to get that out there early. So as individuals you know, are planning their career, they kind of can know, okay, do I want to go on a management track or a non-management track? And a non-management track is perfectly acceptable and you will make a great living and have a good life and probably be less stressed out than the folks on the management track. However, again, if money and growth are important to you, the management track is gonna hook you up. At some point, you're gonna plateau as a developer, as a SC, as a network resource. You're only gonna make so much money. You're definitely gonna make six figures, but you're gonna cap out at some point. IT managers continue to have upside though. And the way they do that is their core salary, but IT managers also get things like stock and bonuses and profit sharing. So once you get to a certain point in a company, you get brought into these pools of stock and profit sharing, and then you can really make a lot of money. I know like director VPs of IT that make as much as like a quarter million dollars a year. And a big chunk of that is because of profit sharing and stock. So. Definitely, you know, getting in, you'll definitely clear six figures as an IT manager. But as you grow, you can really get up into like a quarter million dollars a year with all the additional bonuses and, and stock options and whatnot that are available to a lot of IT managers, especially in larger companies. So money, if money is your priority lifelong and you want to make as much as possible, getting into IT management is probably your best track as opposed to just being working as a dev or an SC. All right, traits of a successful IT manager. You gotta be results oriented. It's all about getting the job done, delivering the project on time, being on, on budget, uh, making sure that everyone is happy. You've got to get those results. That's what you're being judged on. And your entire bonus compensation structure is gonna be driven by the results that you accomplish. You gotta be adaptable, because here's the thing. We talked about politics. We talked about dealing with lots of different people you're going to deal with so much stuff that you don't even you can't even think about right now and you've got to be able to roll with it you've got to be able to be adaptable you got to be a self starter too you just can't be sitting back in a corner going okay i'll be over here you got it when you start seeing problems you have to get out in front of them if someone's having a hard time or they're falling behind in their work you got to be there to help them if someone's a troublemaker you got to be there to drop a hammer on them You've got to be a self-starter and make sure you're taking care of business as a manager because otherwise you just won't last that long. I mean, that's the, that's the hard, cold reality of it. And you got to be able to delegate. This is really hard. You'd be surprised how hard this is for so many technologists. We are kind of a hands-on kind of crew. We like, we're very mechanical. We like take care of business. To delegate to others does not come naturally. I know for me, I had to really work so hard on passing work to other individuals. 
because I was always kind of egomaniac, like, oh, well, they won't do a good job as I will. And you know what? A lot of people will not do as good a job as you do. They might do 80% as good of a job as you do, but they're never going to get to that 100% unless you guide them, mentor them, train them, and motivate them. So you can just assume that there's always going to be that opportunity for improvement with your team, but you can't be holding them to a standard that they can't meet and be really frustrated all the time. It's really much more about growth. Obviously, you have to be able to leverage your resources effectively to accomplish what needs to be accomplished, but they have got, you've got to show them the way as a leader. So you've got to start first by delegating to them. Um, you really got to be driven to the personal and professional growth. We talked about that, you know, again, not an individual contributor role. You really want to be able to grow. And that takes a certain kind of personality. I would say even takes a little ego that, you know, you want to be in charge. You want to shape the future of the company. You want to be responsible for, you know, you want to be a change agent. And so that takes a certain kind of passion to, to really want to make that happen. You have to be authentic and trustworthy. If your team doesn't trust you, ooh, you're going to have a hard time. And more importantly, if the business doesn't trust you, if they don't think you're authentic and they don't trust your word, it's going to create so much work for you because everyone's going to second guess what you're doing. And you could be great at your job, but if they don't trust that you're great at your job, you're always going to have to justify yourself. And that takes a lot of time and sucks the joy right out of your life. So you've got to find ways that make people trust you. And that won't happen right out the gate. You, tr you get people to trust you by delivering when you're going to deliver, by never committing to anything you can't com um, deliver on, um, to always just being very honest and courteous. Once you get that pattern, then they'll come to trust you and you won't have to worry about you know being second-guessed all the time. But you have to work on that. You have to be decisive. You can't him and haw like, well, this or that. You can't have that personality. And sometimes, here's the thing, you're going to be wrong. But you have to have the flexibility back at it to adjust if you are wrong. So you have to be decisive and say, yep, here's what we're doing. Based on all the data I have and the feedback I'm getting from my team, we're going in this direction. Oh, we're a weekend and this look is really looking like it's not going to work. Let's regroup and change directions. That's fine. It's what they call failing forward. But you got to start somewhere. And you can't always be afraid of failure. Failure is not the problem. Failure to act on failure is the problem, and failure to make a decision to move forward is a problem. So you're never going to learn unless you do as a team, and sometimes you're going to get things wrong. Probably 15% of the time you're going to get things wrong. You can't be afraid of that. You have to be decisive. You have to trust yourself, trust your team, and be decisive in making decisions. And you're going to provide a safe-to-fail environment, and this is what I was talking about being decisive. Again, you're going to fail. Make it safe to fail. You want your team to know, hey guys, I believe in you. You're really talented. That's why I hired you. If something goes wrong, something fails, all I expect is that you let me know what it is and that we work together as a team to fix it. That's it. That's You've got to give that environment of safety because I'll tell you what, if you don't, everyone will drag their feet on any major decision and nothing will get done. So what they call analysis paralysis You've got to be careful of that, and you've got to make your team feel super comfortable that if they make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. We'll fix it. We'll learn from it. We'll move on. Um, and that's where the rapidly be able to troubleshoot and resolve problems is super critical. Hey, I did this thing. It looks like it brought this one you know, test database down. I'm not sure what's going on. you got to be able, if you don't have the skill set to help and mentor that technical level, then you got to make sure you got people there who can and you can bring the right resources in to help folks rapidly, you know, grow, resolve issues, etc. Um, you have to have a collaborative working environment. I can't, I can't stress this enough. You cannot have an environment where people are afraid to speak out and everyone or feel like they're judged. And if you have like a couple really snarky developers or engineers who kind of smack other people down and make them feel stupid, you got to drop the hammer on that because it doesn't matter how great certain resources are. If they are bringing negativity into your team and that team is not collaborative, that team will fail. That team will be toxic and you'll get really great folks who will leave it and go to other teams and then you will become no, you'll be known as an ineffectual manager. And you really, really want to watch that. So early on when you become a manager of a specific team, 
you've got to look around and say, who are the guys that are being positive, who are driving collaboration, and who are the negative Nancys who are bringing, bringing everyone down? And the negative Nancys, you've got to be on them immediately and say, hey, we don't work like this. Keep your comments to yourself. I want it really for you to be constructive, but if you can't, maybe it's time to find another team. That's how you have to lead. You have to be positive and you got to make your team feel comfortable. Um, you got to have a sense of humor because let me tell you, you're going to be stressed out a lot. People are going to be on you. Things are going to go wrong. You'll get problems that will emerge. There is no reason those problems should have emerged in the first place and you have no way of knowing and it's just going to happen because the reality is there's so many variables in technology and you're going to get bitten in the bottom several times and you just have to be able to laugh and resolve the issue. You got to have a sense of humor. Otherwise, you're going to have a nervous breakdown and cry. I mean, and, believe, and believe me, I know that as a fact. I have had probably almost two nervous breakdowns from projects I've worked on that were high profile, very expensive projects. And if I didn't have my sense of humor, I, I probably would have been in, in an asylum by now. Integrity. Do what you commit to when you committed to do it. That's just be consistent and have integrity. And if you do that, it's going to make your life so much easier. If you don't have integrity, people are always going to second guess you and it's going to make your life a living hell. You got to be strategic because here's the thing. This stuff is complex. The projects you work on are going to be expensive. There's going to be a lot of different agendas. People are going to be jockeying for budget dollars. You've got to have a strategic sense of what's going on because it's not just enough to deliver the project on time and on budget or to perform like certain metrics that are asked of you. You've got to make sure everyone feels that what you're doing is a success, is a benefit, and that requires as much almost salesmanship as anything else. And you've got to be that strategic thinker that's always looking for opportunities to, how can I make my team look good? How can I get senior management to recognize our efforts? Um, how can I get additional budget dollars to do more work so we can continue to benefit the company? You've always got to be thinking strategically. And customer service. This is last, but this should be first. Every manager, every team, you have clients. The client is the business and you have to provide solid customer service because if you don't, you're going to have some really unhappy folks. And again, you're probably not going to last very long in your role. All right. So I have a few folks who said, if I wanted to go into management immediately, what would be the first thing I would do, what job should I take? I'm not really super interested in, you know, the tech stuff, but I like IT and I'd like to become a manager. And I thought about that and I interviewed a lot of different directors and managers and one particular trend really emerged and that was that tons and tons of IT managers came from the project management route, technical PM. They started off perhaps as a developer or a network or systems administrator. Then they got certified as a PM and then they moved into management. Because project management is definitely the closest you'll get to IT management. You're dealing with budgets, you're dealing with resources, you're dealing with deadlines, all those sort of things that you deal with as a manager. So moving directly, say, from being a developer into a management role not such a great idea because again, you don't have that experience. You don't have those soft skills, but getting certified as a PM and starting as a technical project manager, working that for a couple years and then moving into management, much better idea. So when I consult for companies and they're looking to do, you know, growth for their employees um, and whatnot, and they say, well, how do we grow up our technologists into managers? The first thing I tell them is make them PMs first because that project management experience is gonna serve them so well, and it's gonna just be a whole different level of responsibility and oversight and politics and all of it that they've never really had to deal with before. They'll have to deal with that as a project manager and then put them in that role for a couple years and then transition them into an IT manager role. So if you are in a tech role already or you're planning your career Definitely get some hands-on experience. If you love development, be a developer. If you like networks, be a network administrator. But then if you're like, okay, now I'm ready to become a manager, don't necessarily expect to drop right into management. Because here's the thing, you're gonna have a lot of problems. Get your PMP certification, Scrum certification, 
become a project manager, do that for about 18 to 24 months, and then start looking for management opportunities. That really is gonna be the best transitional path for you to help you to succeed, for sure. So you're like, okay, great, that's all very helpful. I really like information technology, but I just wanna put myself on a man. I'm a go-getter, I really wanna be a leader, I wanna be a manager, I have no desire to really be a developer, how do I immediately start you know, growing myself to be a manager? Let's say I just got out of college, I've got a generic business degree, I really like technology, I wanna be a technology leader, what do I do? Well, there is a path I've seen a lot of folks take and it's fairly similar to the one I took as well. And it definitely is more of a five-year plan. You're not just gonna come out of college and get yourself into some IT management track right out the gate, especially if you don't have a, you know, a degree in CIS. However, you can parlay your skills and get kind of an entry level job and start to grow immediately. So what I would suggest is if you're like, I really want to get an IT management and I want to get there as quickly as possible. What do I do? What I would first do is get a job at a help desk. There are so many help desk jobs out there because they're not permanent jobs. Most people who get their start in information technology often come from the support desk, from the help desk. Maybe they just came out of college or maybe they're looking to transition careers. Companies love to start folks out in the support desk because you learn so much. And I did three years on the help desk and that's that taught me, that laid the foundation for my entire career because I learned about all the different technologies. I learned about how to deal with people. I learned how to be organized. I learned great customer service, of course. So starting out on the help desk, really the best way to go. So find, you know, let's say you just rolled out of college or maybe you're looking to do a career transition and you wanna get into IT management, go find a help desk job. Do that job for one to two years. Then go get certified and get your certified, uh, was it uh, certification from the PMI to become a certified business analyst professional. And when you get that certification, it'll be pretty easy for you to find an entry level business analyst job. And you wanna become a business analyst probably for about two years. You'll start off junior for one year and you'll work on, a, you'll be almost more like admin type work, but you'll learn a lot about the inner workings of projects. Because everything right now in information technology is really about projects. It's all this matrix, you know, different implementation support. There's so many projects out there. So you want to start getting involved on doing project-based work. And as a business analyst, you'll be able to do that. And then maybe after a year, you can move up to a more senior BA role. So now you're at, you know, three to four years of work experience in IT. Next, get your PMP and become a project manager. Get Scrum certified as well. Get your PMP and Scrum certification. And now start working and running technical projects. And do that for about two years. Get your hands on, manage budgets, manage teams, deal with uh, leadership on the projects. After you're a PM for about two years, you've been at this five, six years, you're ready to find an IT, at least an entry level IT management role. So I've had lots of people say, Perry, how do I become an IT manager as quickly as possible, especially right out of college. This is sort of my secret sauce recipe. I've seen it work a lot. Start at the help desk, become a business systems analyst, move into technical project management, and then you'll be prepared to become an IT manager. That really is gonna be the simplest way to make it happen. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of other ways that people have gone in their career, but regardless, no matter what happens, these three jobs that you do over five to six years are gonna put you in a position to do a lot of amazing things in any information technology organization. So I just think this path's really solid regardless, especially if you're not super interested in doing like development work. This would be a great way to go. All right, so certifications. Going down that path we just talked about. Let's say that you want to start off and find a support desk role. You just came out of college and I know for you more senior folks out there who are maybe looking for information about becoming IT managers, this really is more slated for the person starting their career. And um, I'll put some additional notes in the show notes for more like senior 
like developers and how you can transition. As I mentioned earlier, the best path is to become a project manager. But if you're starting from scratch, this is kind of my recipe for starting the scratch and putting yourself on a path to IT management. So first get your MCSE. And there's a whole lot of MCSEs out there to choose from collaboration, um, business intelligence, infrastructure, pick one that interests you the most. Next, after you get that, get a system administrator job. But what you're really gonna end up getting is a support administrator or support desk, help desk type role. And again, work that for a year or so. Then go to either the PMI or the IIBA and get your CBAB or your professional business analyst certification from either organization would be fine. And then start searching out business analyst roles, either in your existing organization or a new company. And work as a BA for about two years. Then go to the PMI, get your PMP certification, and then get your scrum certification. So these are the certifications I would recommend. And to be honest, I would just recommend these certifications for anyone looking to break in to information technology. If you got all these all at once, you'd be in a great place for sure. But definitely you can kind of get them one at a time to grow your career. So this is my secret sauce. It's my path to getting a career in information technology management. But more to the point, I think this is just a great, great path to starting your career in information technology regardless. All right, I wanna thank you so much for being here with us. We got more great content coming your way. Stay with us. And again, thank you so much for supporting us and purchasing this product and being with us on this journey. We're really happy to be here with you and we're look, really looking forward to your success. Thank <laughs> you.